us. Instead of directly speaking from my head, which hasn't been working well for the past 12 days or so, I'll read from a couple of sheets which I wrote and printed, and which are from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for coming here to say goodbye to Daisy. I still can't believe she's gone. On September 6th, we had such a beautiful and wonderful wedding of Kenneth, our son, and Annie, our daughter-in-law. Daisy was so happy and so pleased that Kenneth had found his true love and married Annie, whom we all love and trust. During the wedding, Daisy met and talked and chatted with her longtime friends, in-laws, relatives, and family members. Thinking back, even though we didn't know it at the time, it was indeed a great occasion for everyone to say goodbye to her. On September 7th, we had a nice family get-together at Capital Din Sun in Irvine Spectrum. After we sang happy birthday to Jean, our son-in-law, Daisy happily clasped her hands. Then on Monday, September 8th, we had a nice <coughs> lunch at Class, class 302 Cafe. Near the end of which I asked Yao Zong, my brother, to take a picture of Daisy and me. And that picture turns out to be the last, her last picture on earth. In the evening of the same day, September 8th, when we were watching TV and eating grapes, I turned toward her and saw an expression on her face which I had never seen in my life. I was so horrified and rushed to her side and asked her repeatedly, Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? To which she had since not been able to respond. During those two critical days at Hoke Hospital in Newport Beach, all her family and brothers and sisters and friends came and cried and talked and hugged and prayed for her. For two nights, I slept on a cot next to her bed. And as you can imagine, I didn't sleep well. I repeatedly walked over to her side and looked at her and held her hand and kissed her face and with tears in my eyes said, I love you, many times. <coughs> at around 6.20 p.m. on Wednesday, September 10th, she breathed her last breath. Surrounded by most family members and sister and brother-in-law. When that happened, I walked to her side and bent over and hugged her for a long while and said, I love you forever. I knew that at that moment, she was hovering over us and looking down at us. And I wanted her to know that she wasn't alone. And we were all there rooting for her 
and praying for her. I met Daisy for the first time in the spring of 1965 during my ROTC service after my graduation from NTU. I fell in love with her immediately and it was a classical love at first sight. The first six months of our lives were the heaviest and the sweetest and the golden period, which have been forever etched in my mind. We were engaged a short time before August 28, 1965, when I flew to the U.S. for graduate studies at USC. We were separated for a little more than two years which were two extremely tough years for both of us. For with almost nothing except a little debt to start my life in the U.S., I was struggling and working and studying hard and aiming for the day when we would meet again. And we got through those two years. On September 10th, 1967, Daisy and I were married in Taipei, Taiwan. After, wed after the wedding, we were again separated for three months before I was able to get her to join me in the middle of December. That was when we got started in the U.S. And 47 years later, <coughs> We are at this stage of our lives. Our family started to grow in May 1970 with the birth of Cynthia, and in January 1973 with the birth of Kenneth, and in 2003 with the wedding of Cynthia and Jean, and in May 2008 with the birth of grandson Connor, and in March 2011, with the birth of granddaughter Casey, and in September 2014, with the wedding of Kenneth and Annie. Having been a most wonderful and trustworthy wife, she has helped and complimented me during our years of life together. She was capable and strong and loving and caring. Working hard together, we have achieved financial security with which we have been able to lead a comfortable life and to travel around the world and to help out with the children and the grandchildren. And I, as her husband, am so grateful to her I miss her when I lay on bed. Without her by my side. I miss her when I drive the car. Without her being by my side. I miss her when I drive home. Without seeing her in the house. I miss her when I'm in the backyard, knowing that she will not take her daily short tours of the garden, examining excitedly flower buds and plants such as dragon fruit and the guava fruit and others. I miss her when I open the refrigerator and see the green onion embedded large Chinese cakes which he had so lovingly labored on and baked for ourselves and her dear sister and brother-in-law and her friends. 
I miss her when I see the sunny veil laptop PC where she will no longer be, no longer use that machine. I miss her when the house is so quiet without her lovely voice. Alice, her younger sister, missed her when she saw Daisy's Skype account name on her screen. And I have seen a sign girl. Cynthia missed her mom whenever she saw things related to her mom. Kenneth missed his, um, missed his mom when I handed over to him the cell phone which she will no longer use, and so on and so on. Thanks again for your coming here to pay her respect and bid her goodbye. I pray for the day when I will be reunited again with Daisy, my dearest and most beloved bride, for seven, 47 precious years. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. My mom would be very touched. Please forgive me ahead of time. Um, my father asked if I could say a few words, but I'm not overly fond of public speaking. Either. My mother was an amazing birth, the woman. She taught me many things throughout my life that would shape the person I've become today. Some of which I learned quite quickly, while others I chose to disregard, only to find out the hard way that she was right. And she was almost always right. And I found myself telling her as such. I'm sure this frustrated her and upset her and even disappointed her at times. But sometimes I just had to find out for myself. As I was saying though, she taught me many things. She taught me to be a courteous and to be courteous and considerate to others, and turned me into the polite and caring gentleman you see before you. She also taught me how to show love. My mom was never one to use the words I love you. Although three very powerful words, they were just words and she chose to show her love through her actions. Whether it was yelling at me for doing something wrong or uh, helping me pick myself up after I'd stumbled, or just the simple act of making me a home cooked meal when I'd come home for a visit, she showed examples of her love for me every day of her life. Um, when I was just a child, maybe four or five years old, my mother and I had a secret code. She told me that whenever she squeezed my hand three times, it was her telling me that she loved me. Um, I remember her taking me on errands and walking with me hand in hand. And she, would, she would give my hand a few squeezes and then I'd squeeze back. Um, to this day, I will often give a gentle squeeze to my nieces and nephews' hands when I walk with them. And although they may not know the meaning behind it, I know this act of love to be something my mom taught me. I, I regret that as I got older, I didn't walk hand in hand with my mom anymore. As many of you know, I recently married. During our mother-son dance, my mom asked me if I was happy, and I replied that I was. And then I asked her the same question. She too replied that she was happy and gave me a big smile. Two days later, after she suffered the stroke that would eventually take her from us, I found myself sitting with her in her room, squeezing her hand, hoping that she could understand the feeling that I was trying to convey to her. As I said, my mother showed me, showed her love through her actions. And I find that, like my mom, I too show my love by example. And although I use the words, I love you often with my loved ones, I back those words with substance. So it is that reason which I find myself speaking in front of you, doing something I am not overly fond of, in the hopes to tell my mom, as well as show her, that I love her and I will miss her deeply. Thank you. Perhaps some of you have words of memory. We would like to take this opportunity to open the floor to 
all of you, if you want to share a few words, please come forward.